I've been a catechist for the last four years. And this summer, um, I was also a teacher for Sunday, um, the, sun, the summer school at St. Gregory the Great. And um, what I'm going to talk about is um, making a lesson plan for teaching lessons. And um, this is during Mass, we have this thing called Children's Liturgy of the Word. And basically, it's a session where the children can understand more of what is being said in the Gospel readings from the Bible during Mass. Catholic, and so it's a celebrating Catholic Mass. Um, so first of all, what I need to do in order to prepare um, a lesson of this sort is get all of my materials ready. And so I make sure I have um, the readings down and I make sure I have a planning sheet and uh, any materials, any other like materials that I might use, um, colored paper or things of that sort. Um, next, I make sure um, praying is a very integral part of this process. and I, I ask for the Holy Spirit in order to help me and make sure that I am teaching the children what is, what is really um, said in the Gospel readings or in the readings from the Bible. And so next, I um, read over the materials quickly, trying to figure out one big major theme that that um, resounds in each of the readings. So that the children can use use these use these readings or this key word or symbol in order to remember um, the overall the whole day or the whole lesson that I've prepared. So I read over it pretty quickly, trying for keywords that's repeated in both maybe the first and second reading, and maybe even in the gospel reading. Um, so I do that, and then after that, I um, I fill out my planning sheet. So I essentially have a theme, and then I know the reading. I figure out something something that's applicable to everyday life, maybe a real life application. Um, we're talking about discrimination. I, was talk I brought up the question of the Olympics and wondering if anybody had seen the Olympics. children whether or not um, God would discriminate against people who had like the color blue on their flags and things of that sort.
bring us to get the children to think about um, real life situations so it's not all so far away like 40 AD things things of that sort And then, so um, I make sure I have my focus questions, I make sure I have a symbol, and then I, I type out intentions because it's my belief that all kids should participate and I really enjoy it. And so I make sure all the kids have, um, um, try, I try to include all the kids in all aspects of the lesson I teach. Um, so I have, during my class, I have um, children who turn off the lights and children who blow out the candles and children who are passer outers or kids who are readers. So I make sure to have intentions written out. So if um, nobody has anybody to pray for, I whip out my intentions. And I have like six or seven readers who go up and read. And so that's essentially my preparation. So I make sure I read the readings and I make sure I have the symbol ready. For example, last Sunday, the word key was in, in both the first reading and in the gospel, and it was kind of like, key, your key to heaven is faith. So I, on colored paper, I cut out, um, it's probably about 50 keys. So, and I wrote the word faith on each of those keys, and so whenever they saw the symbol of the key, they would remember that um, your key into heaven is essentially faith. And also, this the gospel reading was about how Jesus made Peter, um, he called Peter a rock. Essentially, he was the foundation for the church. And so, out of my big backyard, I picked up a big rock, and on it I wrote the word, I wrote the name Peter in big, with big magic markers. So there's a huge boulder essentially on like the table um, with the word with the name Peter on it, so the kids would remember. Actually, I didn't write it on there. I had um, a volunteer write the word Peter on there, so all the kids had had something during the mass. So now that I've prepared for everything, um, I get to Mass about 20 minutes before it starts, and it's kind of funny because all the kids probably arrive about five minutes before it starts. So I need volunteers to take up, I need two candle bearers, and I need a person to take up my lectionary. And so I have three kids, and each of them um, go up, and they process in with Father Jim, or whoever is going to be the presiding um, priest at that Mass.
and so I make sure they, they know what to do. They put the candles in the back and they put the lectionary on the altar. After that, I go sit down and, um, and then as soon as the liturgy of the word starts for the, for the adults, um, Father Jim calls me up as our catechist and he calls all the kids up, ages 5 to 11. And so then I go, in, I go up and um, my candle bearers process out in front of me and I'm holding the lectionary up and the lectionary is very sacred because it's God's word. So I have probably about 30 kids, ages 5 to 11, following me out the door. So then we go out the door, and then I have, I have a key, so I'm not sure I unlock the door, and the kids go in. And then, and then, so I introduce myself, and um, I start out with my focus questions, asking, you know, maybe about the Olympics, who's seen the Olympics on TV. Or, um, as in the case with the keys, like, who ha whoever has had parents who's locked their keys in their car, and so we talk about things that that are pretty real world to them so that they understand what I'm talking about. And so, I mean, it's, it's kind of funny because I had, like, my kids would ask, would tell me stories. We'd spend, like, ten minutes, like, talking about, oh, when my mother locked her keys in the car, I had to, like, crawl through the window and so getting warmed up to me. And then, so after I have my focus questions done, um, we begin with our prayer. And then, and then pretty quickly I go through um, the first reading, my responsorial psalm, and then um, the Alleluia, which is the gospel acclamation, and then we do the gospel. And even before that, I tell them to remember the key words. The key word for the day was key, and also listen to the word rock for Peter. And then, so I have that. And then as soon as the readings go by really quickly, and then I have questions about the readings, so then we do questions about the readings. And then more applications, like I always ask, like, who has brothers and sisters and um, who fights with their brothers and sisters, and we talk about, like, how to improve on that. And we talk about keys and how the key to, keys to heaven, um, your key into heaven is really your faith, and the reason that Jesus made Peter the rock was because Peter had so much faith and essentially he was given the keys into heaven. And then after that, um, um, during this whole time, Father Jim is giving his homily, so this is the this is the part the children's liturgy of the word is um, taking place of the older people's children. Um, 
the older people's wear day of the word. And then so after that, um, we do the Children's Creed, which is kind of like the Nicene Creed, but written for children, so that they understand what they're saying. And then we do our prayers of the faithful, and then um, I, usually the kids volunteer, they want to pray for their pets, or they want to pray for their sick grandmother, or they want to pray that like their flower grows tomorrow, and simple things like that that, that kids want to pray for. And then I have my intentions, and usually um, something like, um, so that all the children are safe during this vacation, and so that they may spend quality time with their parents, or May God help us have more patience with our younger brothers and sisters so we don't fight. And so um, we have things like that. And then after that, um, I have my candle blower. I would blow out the candles and hit the lights and we're back right in time for, um, for, for the celebration of the Eucharist. And then we do mass as usual. So that's the end of my.